Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. This morning, we have three uh, of my favorites. The next service will be three more of my favorites. But today, I'm excited. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of announce them each, and then I'm gonna let them rock and roll, and they'll kind of introduce each other. And I want you guys to lean in. I want you guys to ready to receive what God has given them for us today. They have a word in season, each and every one of them. So I'm excited. I'm getting ready to take notes and lean in and respond. I want to say amen in. I want some cheering. Um, but these, these three are people who carry something incredible, carry God's word, carry God's heart for people. And so I'm excited. And, uh, we have the three in this service. We have the one and only getting it started. Chris Sturgis, everybody. Followed by... Followed by the rose among thorns, Ashley Spears. Landing the plane in this service will be Ryan Stelsner. Come on. That's a trio. That is a trio right there. So would you get on your feet and help me welcome up as we get started? Come on, Chris. Bring the word, baby. Thank you. I'm so excited. The worship team is great. I'm excited for today. And just getting in here, it just excites me because I I, I was reflecting on so much. And I'm so grateful for Pastor Samuel and Katie to ask me to come. Just just coming. And they really didn't give me much of any direction. They said, we're doing Connect. Come bring a word. You've been selected. And here we go. And so I'm so grateful because uh, our church is so epic. I love Awaken Church. I've been here five years, and I'm so grateful for Pastor Jurgen, Pastor Leanne, that they would come here to my hometown. I've been in Carlsbad my whole life. They would come here specifically to plant a church that's a Holy Spirit-filled discipleship church here in San Diego to build an army. So I'm so grateful for those champions that come here and the ripple effect. It's really a ripple effect that they're doing, kind of like the echo in that song. That's Awakened Church. It's going out everywhere now because of the leadership and their discipleship. Our campus pastors are super epic. Pastor Samuel and Katie, uh, they're just leading us. And I'm grateful for your obedience and saying, yes, we'll do this. We'll lead this team. We'll lead these people coming to Carlsbad because I love this city. And I love this church, and I'm so grateful to be here under this leadership here with Dr. Matt and the epicness. One thing about Dr. Matt is he believed in me five years ago, and I didn't believe in myself. And that is so, I'll never forget that amongst all the other stuff he does, but he's so amazing. And then the Sullivans here are so epic because Pastor Jesse, one thing about Pastor Jesse is a daily dose from Pastor Jesse can change your entire life, and that's what it's done for me. So Pastor Cat probably knows that. So I'm so grateful just to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. And then, you know, just as I look out right here, and I know we got to make this quick. So this is going to be today. I know it's a fresh word. It's a, 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 like a re-inspiration. I think God's bringing a word for us to get re-inspired today. But it's going to be like an AK-47 of love. We're going to have, you know, I'm going to try to get through this thing, to birth a fast delivery of a message. And then, you know, we got a, a, a nice lineup, an amazing lineup for the rest of the morning. So do double service, double dip, and let, let's take off from there. And then, you know, just as I look out here, this is like a family meeting. This is, you know, I was sitting here in worship and I was like, uh, the, a family meeting, like even the Warners coming all the way from Balboa, John and Christina on a Connect Sunday. And you know, it's no accident you guys are here because Christina and John, you guys are like the ultimate connectors running public square, connecting everybody. So we just, I didn't ask permission, but we're going to publicly invite you guys to come to Carlsbad, come to this campus and be here. God's word says he gives you the desires of your heart when you delight yourself in him. So there's nothing wrong with being here. Yeah. 
Well, a verse that I, that I had to pick uh, uh, that just is, is birthing in my heart was that um, in Revelation 12, 11, it says that with the word, we can overcome the devourer. We can overcome the enemy. We can take authority over the enemy with the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. And I know that. So today, the best thing I could give in this few minutes is a testimony. And my, the first word that I got when I was here was up at the top of there when Pastor Jurgen was preaching. And he said, you can always judge a tree by the fruit. You, the fruit is determined by the soil you're planted in. And he says, where do you want to be planted? And I was standing up there by Peter, and I, and I looked around. I saw these, all these epic people, beautiful, here in Carlsbad. This was before San Marcos. And I said, I want to be planted right here. Yeah. I didn't know what that meant, but I knew it meant not to leave. Right. I have been here in this city my whole life. I went, I've been to almost all the churches, at least in Oceanside and Carlsbad, because I was on the hunt before I showed up here. Right. And, and, I, and then I, yeah, I was. And then I showed up, and I was like, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to be. And what I learned was uh, when I went to, to men's prayer, Dr. Matt brought a word that changed my life. That was a confirmation. But he said, he, he, he um, referenced fighting for the family in Nehemiah, one hand on the sword and building the family. We need to fight for our families. And uh, that pierced my heart because one of the biggest attacks in my life has been on my family. And I said, oh, my gosh, these are the type of guys I need to be around because I have been in community. I have been connected in communities and in uh, 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 groups of people, but I wasn't connected to the right thing. And coming here, I got connected to the right thing. And I wasn't going to write anything down because I thought, hey, we got a 10-minute message. But then the Holy Spirit told me this morning, like, like another 3 a.m. Or he said, we have the Bible because we wrote stuff down. So you better write something down because you don't want to miss it. <laughs> I don't want to forget anything. I want to talk about the journeys because this is Connect um, Sunday. And I want to encourage you and empower you to get connected, effective immediately, plant yourself. It's more than just signing up for a group, but that is going to be one of the things. But the second week I got here, I remember I went to DNA and I immediately got, uh, went on the usher team. I just said, yes. The message is like, say yes to God. That's what I thought. Cause I said, yes to God. I showed up here. I said, yes, I'm going to stay planted. I showed up to God. I went to DNA. I showed up. I just got, someone just asked me to be on the usher team. I said, okay, I don't even know what that means. And then what I realized is just saying yes, started opening doors. That got me to my first connect. I remember the very first connect, and I got to hit these quick, but the first one, I remember the one thing I wanted so bad was uh, to, to be in community, but I remember at the end of that Thursday night, and I had to fight to get to that connect because I was working for the fire department. I, I had to take time off, and it was really difficult to get, but I fought because there was one thing I needed, and it was prayer. I, 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 we prayed at that place. We wrote down prayer requests. And I remember just thinking, I hope somebody prays for those things. We're going to pray for those. But I, I fought just to get that connected, just for that prayer. And I'll never forget that. And then it led down a road of, we started these Pathfinder connects where I went to all of them. I was so hungry for it. I went to all of them. And I remember going to the Smith's house and I was so impressed with Everything about them, and then all the people, and the Moraleses were there leading this thing, and we had the toggles, and they were leading, and I was like so inspired with business, and I was like, we got farmers, we got book writers, and and there, going to the connect, here's the point, going there got me re-inspired. I said, oh my gosh, like, I I get out of my own mind state and got re-inspired to do great things. We don't have to be limited by this belief system that I had. And so a a year later, um, what did we do after that? Oh, we... we, went to your, the soul events for the deserts to do that connect. And that was the pivot point. Here's what connected for that. It was a pivot point. And this is where I, the Holy Spirit told me, Chris, you're doing it. You're being faithful. You're raising your kids in the way of the Lord so that they won't depart. And the way that I did that was surrounding myself with families and people, especially for the next generation. Yeah. So I started surrounding myself and this was a couple years ago before and through COVID and we started to kind of fight together. I remember that. I'll never forget that group, Graham, and everything we did. And then we kind of split off. There was another season, right? You know, there's seasons through connect, through church and, and through what I think God brings us through. And then I remember, um, I was called to lead a group. I got a new place. It was big enough. And I remember thinking, um, when I, you know, especially at the Smiths, this is what it was, it was, it was born. But I said, I, I want a place that I can host. 
So I went from fighting just to get to somebody's house, to get to a connect group, to connect with someone, to now, okay, now I'm, gonna get, I'm, I'm, in, I'm planted, I'm, I'm doing church, but outside there, now I'm surrounded, right? And these are through emerges where we get words like, who's your six? The first year was, who's your 12? And I'm like, I don't have 12. But I remember Paul was my captain. I said, look at him and his son. I want to be like this guy. Yeah. I want, okay, so then the next year was like, who's your six? Because the word was like the same two, three people don't want to hear your stuff. So get your six so you're surrounded, <laughs> right? Because the Bible says, you know, iron sharpens iron persons or man sharpens man or person sharpens person. So we need to be around people and get sharpened. And then I started, God started to do that. His word started to manifest in my life, getting surrounded, getting sharper. Um, and then so I was able to host. And I immediately jumped in to hosting groups at my house, leading groups. We had to connect on the beach with a surf club, support and awaken academy. Then at nighttime, we had the, the, the Deleji family. They're bringing, we're doing youth worship. So we got 30, 50 people crammed in this place. Kids are running around, but what they're doing is they, they not only bring in worship, but they were putting their hands on people, praying and prophesying. People are getting healed. People are, this was some people's only time to connect with somebody outside of church. Some people didn't even come to church. They only came to that. And to see the youth, that was one then you know we did the business connect with captain dom here and that and opened up so many things the first year yeah the first year we birthed or you know god kind of birthed out of that 17 new businesses and we had a birthday party and i remember thinking oh my gosh this like church we don't just talk about it we don't we we do it this church does it it births stuff it does it and it starts with connects starts coming out of here it starts coming out of here and then we you know and then because the time, I'm just, if, I'm good, I got to read these testimonies from other people, because you can hear from one person or the next five lined up, but let me give you these quick t testimonies. Connect has given me community, continuous growth in, G in Jesus, Loa. Connect has changed my life. I'm no longer scared and alone. I have a family for first time. Three connects has changed my life forever. I'm healed physically and spiritually. Carol Harrells. Number three, Connect Group has brought personal breakthrough in life-giving relationships outside the four walls of church. Melanie, family comes from unexpected places. Madison, uh, financial prayers answered. Jennifer Loker, Connect has given a bright spot in my life. Connection with others and deeper faith. Peter Snyder, learn how to heal and deliver. Learn how to help the successful business person in their business and life. Dominic Severance, it gave me a sense of family. Kimberly, um, it, if, uh, missing one here. Everyone needs to be loved and touched with healing. Victoria Rafferty. One more and then I'm done. Connect has fortified my city. The connect groups and being connected to God has brought the adventure of serving God to life. I have friends. I'll go into the trenches with Chris Sturgis. That's all I got. Thank you. We're going to bring up Stan. Welcome. Ashley Spear. So good, Chris. So good. So just a forewarning, I'm 37 weeks pregnant. If I sound out of breath, I actually am. So <laughs> I'm not going to talk as fast as Chris. <laughs> I can't even come close to it. Um, but we're just going to jump right into it, you guys. I'm super excited. So in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says that, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. And behold, the new has come. And so my husband, Zach, and I, we have some newer friends named John and Nineveh. And recently, our friend John was giving a presentation on achieving your fitness goals. And he said something in that presentation that was so profound and really hit both of us. And you see, John and Nineveh, they work in the fitness and the mindset industry. And their company recently went from making about 100 grand a year, $100,000 a year, to $6 million in three years. So, I mean, in any world, that's like super amazing. And I think we'll all raise our hand and take that. Um, but before that, they failed in business, that same industry for 10 straight years. And when John was giving his presentation, 
you know, you can imagine that as he's gone through this process, like going from basically nothing to six million in three years is going to bring a lot of baggage with it. And when he was giving his presentation, he said, a lot of people don't hit their goals because they're trying to improve an old self-image rather than totally replacing that self-image. So you see, the person that John and Nineveh need to be to run and be successful in the $6 million business is totally different than the people that they were the prior 10 years and to make that happen. And when Pastor Kat and Samuel came and asked me to speak today, I couldn't shake this idea out of my head and it didn't make sense to me. I'm like, God, why do you want me to talk about this? Like, I don't, I don't see how it relates. And he, the Holy Spirit spoke to me a few days after reflecting on it. And he said, you know, I want you to talk about this idea because the reason that a lot of people don't plug into community or the reason that they plug in, but they don't fully commit is because they are improving an old self-image around relationships instead of totally replacing the identity that they have around relationships. And he literally said, the Holy Spirit said, they're holding on to old thought process, old ideologies, old hurts, rather than becoming the new creation that I have created them to be. You see, sometimes our old self-image around relationships can say, oh, I've been hurt in church before. I've been hurt and I've been embarrassed. I've been taken advantage of. I've been humiliated. And so I'm going to still come to church, but I'm going to keep people like at a distance. I'm going to keep them in my safe zone. So I'm going to improve my old self-image and I'm going to like, I'll commit to serving on a Sunday. I'll come in, I'll serve, I'll sit in service. I'll, I'll say hi to my trusting friends when I come in and when I leave, but like, I'm not going to really do life with these people because that's scary and that like opens up room for hurt. But Christ says like, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And so our new self image around relationships, it says that, yeah, I was hurt in church. I was hurt by people. And I acknowledge that. And it felt really crummy. It did not feel good, but I know that we are all flawed human beings. I know that we are all on this journey and that even if I get hurt, I know that I can move forward past that. I know that I'm not going to project the wounds and hurts of other people onto new people in my life and that my value comes from the Lord, not from other people. And so Zach and I used to attend a a church in Chicago and every week they would say, Hey, if you're here and you don't want to get hurt, like This is not the church for you because guess what? If you stick around long enough, like you're going to get hurt. But every week they said, we are all imperfect people serving a perfect Jesus. And it's so true. Like we're all serving a perfect Lord and he's the only one in our life that's never going to let us down. And just remembering that. So um, instead of putting ourselves at a distance, our new self image says like, I'm the only, I can move past offense. And I know that we are all all imperfect people being reconciled daily, but maybe our old self image says, or we come into church and we hear something on the stage or we see something on social media from one of our leaders. And it like, we don't really understand what they're saying. And it like kind of puts us off or like, Hmm, like I never heard that before. And because we're not in community, we, we go home and we go into isolation and we start to process this thing that we don't really understand from all these different perspectives. And we come up with all these ideas in our head of what they probably meant when all we really need to do is be in, um, I'm oh, sorry. So they, and they say like, you look at that and you say like, wow, that's really out there. And that's a super bold comment. Like, I don't know if I can keep these people close because that's bold and that makes me uncomfortable. And that challenges my thought process. But instead we just look at that and we say, Hey, in this new image of myself, like, I don't really understand what they meant when they said X, Y, and Z. It didn't quite make sense, but I'm not going to go into isolation because I'm not in community. I'm going to find people I trust who have wisdom, who have discernment. I'm going to process that with them. I'm going to hear different perspectives. I'm going to go deeper into it because I know there's life on the other side. And so these are just two examples of old thought processes, old matrixing, old, old things that we're going through in our mind that keep us from going deeper into relationships, from going deeper into connect. And again, in second Corinthians, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed and the new has come. And I don't believe 
that this is just a one-time thing when we accept Jesus into our heart. I think it's a daily reconciliation through our daily Bible reading, through prayer, through being in community, through mentorship and discipleship. And I can tell you that when we recreate our self-image around community and when we really plug in, it leads to prayers being answered. It leads to prophetic words being spoken over us that actually come into reality. It comes to growth from putting ourselves in healthy but uncomfortable and challenging situations for people to do life with and people to come around us in a time of need, a time of hurt, but also in a time of celebration, people that want to celebrate your wins and be there with you in those life moments. So I challenge all of us to step out in boldness in that new creation that Christ has created us to be and to really seek discernment um, around what that new identity around relationships looks like for each and every one of us. And then take that first step today out in the lobby, talk to Ryan and Corey and sign up for Connect. So we love you all. And we're going to bring out the amazing Ryan Stelsner. Wow. I mean, even after the tithe, we could have packed up and go home and then have two amazing messages like that. Um, Pastor Samuel, you mentioned that, you know, it was hard to pick six and we have so many good leaders. I mean, it's because of you. It's because of you and Pastor Katie. Like, like creates like. Like, you're such amazing leaders. You have such a heart for people, so much love for, for God's church, and you just breed leader after leader after leader after leader. So it's just amazing. Um, I always like to joke that you could like toss the mic out into the crowd at Bressy and like someone could come up and preach, which is really cool. And it's a, it's a unique thing even amongst Awaken to have such a high GDP of just like phenomenal people. Um, yeah, I think there's a good acronym in there somewhere. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray real quick because I like to pray before I get into it so I don't get in trouble. Um, well, Father God, I thank you for, for just removing gravel from the soil, God, removing any thorns, removing anything, God, that everything that's been spoken today would just sink so deeply, Father, that people would just resonate with this message, Father, because it is you. It's your great commission. The last thing you told us, God, is this what we're talking about, God? If we could just get this one thing, everything would work out, Father. So we thank you. We love you. We just honor you in Jesus' name. Had a, uh, also, like uh, on theme, I had a message, but I'm watching um, Eric hit his knees and I followed suit and it just reminded me of this principle that's called, it's actually hunting dogs. When you have hunting dogs and you have multiple of them, there's a principle called honoring the point. And it's when one dog goes out and he catches the scent of something, even if the other dog doesn't catch that scent, he'll copy what that other dog's doing, because he's assuming if I just copy and look what the direction that he's going, then I'll pick up that same scent. And we can do that exact same thing like in worship. Like if I see Eric having a moment where he's encountering God, I'm like, well, he just had that epic message and I was doing this. I'm just like, it's easy. Like I'm just gonna do what he's doing and then get the results. And like I encounter God, I literally felt like a wind of the Holy Spirit come and blow through and just like confirm that message. And if you would just listen to the people that are talking and be like, okay, I'm just gonna, it's not hard. Like it, just do what he's doing. Just honor the point. Like, oh, well, they're getting these results. So I'm just gonna do what they did. Like I, I'm, I'm not smart enough to create this stuff. I, mean, I don't think any of us are. Like we literally, God says the same thing to us like over and over and over and over and over and over again. But if we would just follow what other people are doing before us, it makes it super easy, not that complicated. And if you're struggling with something, then just ask. Just, just ask. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go through these pretty quick, um, but I would like to present an idea to you guys. And that's that um, the first point is basically to make disciples and not converts. Because discipleship is connect. That, that's what that is. The Great Commission says, um, the Great Commission says, make disciples of all nations and teach them to follow me in all their ways. I think a lot of people, when they hear the Great Commission, they hear like, oh, well, get people to raise their hand, say, I follow Jesus, and then move on to the next one. That's the opposite of what that's saying. Like that part is actually super easy for us because all we do is We'll do it again at the end of this message. We'll, we'll create an opportunity for you to respond to what God is already doing in your heart. Yeah. 
and you respond, that's a between you and God. Our job comes in after that. After that, when you say, okay, I'm following Jesus now, my life is in shambles though, what do I do? That's where we come in and we circle around you and you get into a connect group and say, hey, all these people are living epic lives. Can you please show me how to live an epic life? And if you just look at um, Jesus with his disciples, like a lot of times we think discipleship is, I have to sit down and we have this one-on-one thing and I take you out to, you know, and I have to ask you all these questions and it's a super disciplined format, but that's not the model that Jesus gave us. They just did life together. Like they said, they ate food a lot. And also if you don't have good food at your connect group, it's not me and Corey, you're going to have to see the Lujans because you guys need deliverance. All right. (laughs) Good food at connects. That's, that's the jam or pastoral care and, and, and hidden ministry team. We're open up the altar at the end. We can take care of that right then. Don't let it go past Sunday, right? Uh, <laughs> um, but I would like to suggest that actually the state of the world right now is because we as a church have failed to understand to make disciples and not converts. You see what, what, a, what, a, what a cancerous cell is, is essentially it's a cell of the body that grows excessively without purpose. It doesn't get a purpose. It does every other cell in your body, whether it's a liver cell, a brain cell, a blood cell, they're assigned a purpose and they go fulfill that purpose and they only replicate when they're told to replicate by the rest of the body. When a cancer cell misses that memo, replicates out of control and doesn't serve a specific purpose other than to grow. It then consumes resources from the rest of the body and spreads throughout the rest of it. If we don't understand this to make disciples and not converts, then all we're doing is creating a cancer within the church. And if you look around the world, like, uh, you know, we've heard this multiple times, but the world is the way it is because of the church. Not because of the world. The world is the world. It's dark and fallen, and that's what's going to happen. But if we are noticing that, it's because we failed. Yeah. It's not too late, though. I'm not teaching a doom and gloom message. That's why we're all here. That's why we're all talking about connect and discipleship, so we can nail down this one point and get this so the next 50 years doesn't look like the last 50 years. Now, I'm going to read um, out of Ephesians. And if you, Ephesians is my favorite book. If you need a shot in the arm really quickly of who you are in Christ and what your job is, read Ephesians. It takes 20 minutes to read through the whole book. If you have questions, ask someone in your connect group because they'll walk it out with you, all right? Um, But this is out of Ephesians 4. So I'm going to read, and I also am going to read out of the TPT. I gave you all NIV. I'm just keeping it spicy. So this is 4, 11 through 12, and then I'm going to go ahead and read on in 16. And I want you to think, because this is essentially how we are to act as a church now. And he has appointed some with grace to be apostles, and some with grace to be prophets, and some with grace to be evangelists, some with grace to be pastors, and some with grace to be teachers. That's all of you. Amongst you right now, our pastors, our apostles, our teachers, are things that, that you yourselves have not even begun to see, but it is our job as a church to pull that out of you. It's our job as connect leaders and as ministers to pull that out of you so that you can be the next ones that are taking this. And their calling is to nurture and prepare all the holy believers to do their own works of ministry. And as they do this, they will enlarge and build up the body of Christ. Yeah. See, that's growth with a purpose. That's growth with a purpose. That's taking a cell, if each one of us are cells, that's taking a cell, assigning it a job and releasing it to perform that job. That's all we're doing. That's the same thing I'm doing right now is I just got raised up and released from the leaders before me. And, and now I'm doing the same thing to call on other cells and assign purpose. And we, that's how we grow healthily. That's how we take the nations. That's how we fill the, the, this world with believers is we disciple And at the end it says, for his body has been formed in his image and is closely joined together and constantly connected as one. And every member has been given divine gifts to contribute to the growth of all. And as these gifts operate effectively throughout the whole body, we are built up and made perfect in love. I believe what that's saying is that each, it says constantly connected, right? You have to really think about what a body is, is if, it says elsewhere in the Bible, but if one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. 
It's so true. So this is not um, your neighbors, your brother and sisters, the people that are around you to left and right, their health is actually your health. If they're not connected, if, if they're not being surrounded by community and growing, that actually cripples all of us. And that's not to shame the person that's growing. That's actually to call to action the people that are healthy to say, well, maybe are you, are you kind of just hanging out in your own group and not really noticing who's around? Like, it's super easy to find when someone's new here. You, you get it immediately. They walk in, they're like, oh, this is an intense place. You get that eyes. And yes, if you're new here, we can tell. But that's not to call you out. It's so that we can come and surround you and love on you. Um, but it's really just that. It's just discipleship. It's just joining around. It's just honoring the point. It's just doing what people have done. But you know, all of this, everything that everyone has talked about today is built upon Christ being the cornerstone, not just of the church, but of our own lives. And if everything that we're talking about sounds really nice, but you, you just don't really understand what it's built upon if you don't yet have a relationship with Jesus, a personal one, not knowing of Jesus, but knowing Jesus as your personal Lord. We're just gonna open up a moment for you. So if you could bow your heads, close your eyes. I just feel Christ right now calling out to all of us individually. If you've been far away from God, or if you've never known him, I just wanna, I'm gonna count to three in a second. You're given an opportunity to say, I wanna know Jesus. I wanna know this God that you're talking about. And then from that point on, we're not gonna leave you alone. We're gonna surround you. We're gonna equip you. We're gonna make sure your life looks differently than it did before. So if that's you and you just wanna know Christ, you raise your hand in one, two, three. And give it another moment. And give it another moment. If you feel that there's wrestle going on internally, or you're feeling anxious, or you wanna get out of your seat, that's God calling you. That's Jesus calling you. Ephesians 1, 4 said, before the world was created, he knew you. He knew you and he called you out to be holy and blameless in his sight. So we're gonna follow me in prayer real quick. That's everyone, not just the people that raised their hands. Lord Jesus, I give my life to you, to follow you. I repent of all my sin and I thank you for filling me. And let all the rest of my life be the best of my life. In Jesus' name. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen. For more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.